Hello class, um, in this um, last lecture before your unit three exam, I can't stress how important it is that you um, get started early because um, this is on blood pressure regulation, so it's a little bit um, more conceptual, but you also wanna get a head start on this unit um, so that you can get going, learn the material. Um, I am gonna set this week's quiz to be due on Wednesday, so you have time to prepare for the test. So you have Thursday and Friday to prepare for the test. Okay. And then um, let's get started on blood pressure regulation. So you can see from the screen, um, let me make it a little bit bigger, that blood pressure is, is think of a cardiac output when we talk about before. And blood pressure is the amount of force you can push blood um, throughout the body. So. In that force, what you need to know is that there should be a homeostasis because um, blood pressure, when it's too low, there's not enough force to push that blood to the brain. So the brain is lacking oxygen, lacking ATP. So the patient might be incoherent, unconscious, or even in a coma, okay? And if the blood pressure is too high, there's no immediate danger, but throughout the patient's life, the high blood pressure is pounding on the blood vessel and damaging the blood vessel, making critical vessels um, in the danger of failing, such as the case of heart attack or in stroke when the blood vessel in the brain fails. So um, we are going to really look at what are, what are the factors that control the blood pressure. Okay, so there's um, three main factors that control blood pressure. And these are the three factors that regulates blood pressure to make sure that they are maintained at homeostasis. So what you wanna really understand is how each of the factors regulate that blood pressure. And then the whole unit is actually kind of based on looking at these three factors, how to control them, what are medications that can be used to regulate them, and um, um, what are some things that can go wrong, okay? So you really wanna understand, and again, it's not, as, difficult topic, but you want to understand that they govern blood pressure. Okay, so let's start with these three factors and we can start um, understanding it a little bit more. Okay, so if you think about blood pressure, right, like I said, like we talked about, it is the force that is exerted on the vessel wall. Okay, that force is going to be generated by a number of things. Okay, um, so we want to look at these three factors that is um, the force on the blood vessels. Okay, so first off, you have the cardiac output, okay? So the cardiac output is the heart, all right? The pounding of the heart, the beats of the heart. So that's cardiac output is heart rate times stroke volume, okay? So both can change blood pressure. So when you have a stronger cardiac output, you have a higher blood pressure. The stronger the heart pumps, the higher the blood pressure. And then the weaker the heart pumps, the lower the blood pressure. Okay, so that one we, we already kind of covered, so that can help you understand it. The next one is vessel diameter or vessel radius. That's basically saying how big is the blood vessel. Okay, so the blood vessel can actually be quite easy to control. Okay, and we'll talk about how you control that. But for now, let's just look at what happens when it is controlled. So when you have a bigger radius or diameter of a circle, and then that vessel then shrinks down or decrease in vessel diameter, smaller shrinking down. That's called vasoconstriction, okay? And vasoconstriction is gonna increase blood pressure because now there's less space for that blood to flow through, okay? And so then the vessel itself will feel a higher force or higher blood pressure. Okay, the same reverse can happen. The blood vessel can dilate and now there's more room for blood to flow through, less resistance. So then now that's vasodilation and that's decreasing blood pressure. Okay, and then and the last one is volume. So in our body, there's a certain amount of volume of fluid or volume of blood. So in this case, we're going to talk about BV or blood volume, how much blood is in the body system. This is regulated by kidneys. So kidneys are a way to get rid of fluid, right? So um, blood volume is very much related to urine output. So the more there is urine output outside the body, the lower the blood volume and the lower the blood pressure. 
okay? The, if the urine is not coming out, like a patient has re, a fluid retention issue, then there's an increase in blood volume and an increase in blood pressure. There's, of course, also, um, you can drink water, but then the kidney, if you don't need that water, will urinate that off. So say if you drink half a gallon of water, you will increase urine output, try to maintain that homeostasis of blood pressure. But if a patient drinks a gallon of water and they can't urine, then that's going to cause a high blood volume and a high blood pressure. Okay, so this introduces the three factors, and I gave you a number of opportunities to practice those factors on how it relate, uh, regulates blood pressure. Remember, these questions are going to be repeated on the practice quiz. So practice answering the, these, making sure that you understand all these concepts, and then go and try the practice quizzes as many times as you want until you understand the relationship of all these factors in um, blood pressure. Remember, when a patient, you've been looking at um, patient's health, um, different organ function, and different diseases, so then you have to kind of understand where the blood pressure imbalance is coming from. So really try hard learning this, and then before you progress onto the different regulation of these three factors, and you'll uh, have an easier time understanding um, these concepts. Okay, so this is the introduction to blood pressure. The next uh, video, I'm gonna talk about um, neuronal control of blood pressure.